Hi there! In this video, we'll be talking about typhoons and how they develop. You may have wondered, what is the difference between a typhoon, a hurricane, and a cyclone? Let's take a look at this map to answer that question. Hurricanes, cyclones, and typhoons are all types of tropical storms. They are all basically the same thing, but are given different names depending on where they appear. Hurricanes are tropical storms that form over the North Atlantic Ocean and Northeast Pacific. Cyclones are formed over the South Pacific and Indian Ocean. And typhoons are formed over the Northwest Pacific Ocean. Let's observe the path of these tropical storms. Notice that they never cross the equator, nor do they occur near it. Hurricanes and cyclones are born in waters at least 8 degrees north or south of the equator. The rotation of the Earth sends them off on a track that arcs away from the equator. This is because of the Coriolis effect. Since the Earth is roughly a sphere, the speed of its rotation is fastest at the equator and slowest at the poles. When air leaves the poles, its speed increases as it travels towards the equator. As a result, the air veers and it doesn't go straight. This is the Coriolis effect. It is named after the French mathematician and physicist Gaspard Gustave de Coriolis. In this video, let us use the term typhoon since this is what we commonly call tropical storms here in the Philippines. You may also have wondered, why do typhoons have a name? Like the typhoons Yolanda, Roli, and Ulysses. Typhoons last a long time and are given names so they can be identified quickly. In most places, the first storm of a year will have a name beginning with A, and the next one gets a name beginning with B so they are named in alphabetical order. Whether scientists hold meetings to decide on new names for the next year. Names of storms which cause a lot of damage, such as the Typhoon Yolanda, are never used again. So, how do typhoons form? Typhoons start off as tropical thunderstorms. The strong winds pull in moisture from the ocean. The thunderstorms convert the moisture into heat. The heat causes more air to flow to the center of the storm, causing evaporation of water. All the heat and air flow towards the eye, creating the typhoon. Several atmospheric ingredients must come together to favor the formation of a typhoon. These atmospheric conditions, if met, could cause a typhoon to form, a pre-existing low-level focus or disturbance, warm ocean water, low atmospheric stability, sufficient Coriolis force, humid mid-atmosphere and upper atmosphere divergence are all important factors for typhoon formation. These factors contribute to the tremendous amounts of heat energy transported from the tropics northwards to the higher latitudes. The typhoon is a large heat engine, where great amounts of heat are produced from the process of latent heat of condensation. This occurs as water is evaporated from the ocean surface and condensed into cloud droplets. If all of the preconditions are met, Typhoon formation then becomes possible. There are several types of atmospheric disturbances that can cause a typhoon to develop. The most common mechanism to cause a typhoon to develop is the monsoon trough. This is an extension of the intertropical convergence zone where cyclonic spin has developed. The intertropical convergence zone is a zone of wind convergence of the northeast and southeast trade winds. This trade wind trough does not contain the spin to initiate typhoon development. Typhoons are caused mostly by the monsoon trough in six of the seven hurricane or typhoon formation basins of the world. Here is an illustration of the typhoon formation basins in the world. These include the North Atlantic Ocean, 
the eastern and western parts of the northern Pacific Ocean, the southwestern Pacific, the southwestern and southeastern Indian Oceans, and the northern Indian Ocean, or the Arabian Sea and Bay of Bengal collectively. The western Pacific is the most active and the northern Indian the least active. This is why the Philippines is visited by an average of 20 typhoons every year since it is located on the western Pacific. In a very general sense, typhoons gain power as they move over warm bodies of water and start losing energy once they are over cold water. There are other factors in play, such as the temperature of water and air, moisture, air currents, and the temperature of the landmass, but that is just a general rule. If the typhoon makes landfall on a mountainous landmass, the forced vertical ascent of air due to the mountains can result in huge amounts of rain, maybe several feet in one or two days. In the Philippines, the Sierra Madre mountain ranges acts as a typhoon barrier, weakening incoming typhoons from the Pacific Ocean before reaching the central mainland. Unlike an earthquake, technology has ways to predict a typhoon so that we have time to prepare for it. Here are some safety measures you should do before, during, and after a typhoon. First, inspect your house for cracks and leaks. Determine if your house will be able to withstand a typhoon. If it can, stay inside your house. If it can't, get ready to go to the nearest evacuation center. Next, prepare your emergency kits. This should contain a first aid kit, food and water supplies, emergency lights, pack clothes, and communication devices, such as a smartphone, radio, or TV. During a typhoon, never panic. Stay inside and do not go outdoors. Use rechargeable lights or any alternative light source and turn off the main power switch to avoid electrical accidents. Store appliances and important documents and belongings on high ground in case of flooding. Don't go through flood waters as it may contain disease-causing bacteria or there is a possibility of electrocution since a live wire might be lying around somewhere. Avoid the river or bodies of water in general since these are the sources of floods. After the typhoon, check on your family members and loved ones if they sustained any injuries. In cases of missing individuals or family members, immediately report to the authorities so you can receive help. If there's no clean drinking water available, get the soil-free clearest water and boil it for 20 minutes before ingesting to ensure it's clean and sterilized. Boiling kills harmful bacteria that may be present in the water. Do not attempt to enter your destroyed house until it's safe. It may contain falling debris that may injure you. Report damaged electric cables and post to authorities immediately for repair to avoid electrical accidents and to restore power as soon as possible. Lastly, empty containers with stagnant water and dry mosquito breeding grounds to avoid the dengue virus. Now let's wrap things up. A typhoon forms when winds blow into areas of the ocean where the water is warm. These winds collect moisture and rise while colder air moves in below. This creates pressure, which causes the winds to move very quickly. The winds rotate, or spin, around a center called an eye. The more warm air and moisture present, the more intense the winds. Landforms and bodies of water on and around the Philippines affect the strength or weakness of weather phenomena such as typhoons. Notably, Landforms lessen the strength of typhoons whenever the winds impact them. Moreover, oceans where typhoons originate provide higher rainfall and strength. That's all for now. We will be discussing more about the path of typhoons that enter the Philippine area of responsibility in our next video. 
See you on our next video and don't forget to keep your minds busy! If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel and hit the notification icon for more videos like this.